As the name implies, special situation and distressed debt funds tend to profit from momentum when economies are in recession by investing in high bonds or loans issued by striking companies. Considering the high number of opportunities on the market, the price asked by those companies tends to be significantly lower, which obviously is a strong incentive for the funds to invest. As of July 21, special situation and distressed debt funds have recorded 10 months of gain in a row, and their cumulated return to that 12%. This is the strongest growth observed since 2009. However, even though a distressed debt cycle was about to start when the COVID crisis became true, the central bank and governments have provided rescue financing to the world economy, leading to a powerful market rebound and a strong economic recovery all around the world. Nothing is certain for the moment, but it's very likely that the strong intervention of the central banks and governments will lead to the extension of the distress cycle. With the low cost of the debt on the financial market, turn mall companies are more leveraged than ever, making them more vulnerable to any economic downturns. The end of the financial crisis measure, as well as the increase of the lending rates, could be the starting point of the difficulties for these companies. Hence, it would be only a matter of time before investment opportunities appear. The fundraising and the accumulation of the dry powder has been rising significantly for the last couple of months. According to private debt investor, fundraising for European private debt fund exceeded $80 billion for the first semester of 21, putting the industry on the track for a record year. Similar trend can be observed in North America, where distressed debt dry powder has increased by 46% to reach $70 billion on June 21. We can see that the debt funds are getting prepared, and it looks to be a smart move, as there is a, will be a lot of opportunities for special situation and distressed debt. Just to illustrate, the European Central Bank estimated last year that the non-performing loans could reach 1.5 trillion euro for the European market. This is well above the level of the financial and sovereign debt crisis.